God. Can we take a five-minute praise break and thank God for his grace? Yeah, no, some of y'all know who you used to be, but for the grace of God, you're not where you want to be, but you're not where you used to be. Because of Jesus, you have come so far. Thank you, God. Come on, every campus, give God a shout of praise. Thank you, Father. I remember getting in and out of windows. I remember not being able to sleep trying to watch pornography on dial-up internet. I mean, you're going to get caught because the beginning, ee, rrr, ee, ooh, ee, and, 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 like all the noise, just because I was trapped. I was burdened. I was in a cycle. I was in bondage. And nobody, they would talk about faith. They would talk about giving. They would talk about purpose. But nobody was hitting the issue. And, and Paul is walking with these dudes and he said, remember the grace of God. Remember what God did for you. But look at verse 12. It says, he tells them, don't, uh, I know y'all thinking crazy stuff right now. Don't even talk because I know. He said, you say, I'm allowed to do anything because I've been saved by grace. God's good. If I mess up, he'll forgive me. <laughs> and, and, but then Paul, oh, I love it. Paul ups the end. He said, you are saved by grace. Like you're going to heaven. But heaven is the lowest level of this Christian walk. Like, the whole goal is not just to get into heaven. Like, and so many of us are just worried about making it in. We, we want to sin on the right days to make sure that, that, that God don't come back on the day we jacked up. Do you understand? I don't know if I'm the only one, but there were some days like, Lord, will you come back next Thursday? Because this weekend, I'm done it up. Like, like <laughs> I know I ain't the only one that prayed that prayer. Not today, Lord. Not today. But the thing is, when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, your, your eternity, your destiny is secure, but God wants to affect your history. He wants your life to make a difference. And so many of us, again, are worried about the line so we can make it into heaven. And Paul ups the ante because they're like, I know that we, you know, we, we're saved by grace. I, I mean, well, I can do anything. God's with us. And he said, but everything. Look at this scripture. I want you to see it. It says, but everything is not good for you. I cannot wait till the church matures to the place where it's about, is it sin or not, is not the criteria of why we do it. Like we step up to a level of maturity where we say, it doesn't matter if it's a sin or not. Is this good for me? Is this going to produce the type of person that I want to be? Is this the pattern that I want my children to? I'm not up here on the line. I'm back here evaluating. Is this going to create the man of valor, the woman of virtue that I want to be? And even though I'm allowed to do anything, I must not become a slave to anything. My question to you, Hope City, is what are you a slave to? Uh-huh. See, so many of us, we, we don't recognize what has the ability to control us. We don't know what's controlling us, and God wants us to have self control. It's a fruit of the spirit. You can read it in Galatians. But I was thinking about self-control, self-control. Is that us controlling ourselves? No. I found out that self-control is just the opportunity for you to choose who you will let control you. And, and this is one of the things that God told me. I used this little uh, acrostic to help me um, understand what this is. So either you can live a spirit-empowered life of faith, self, or you can live a sin-empowered life of the flesh, self. And who, whichever self you allow control you, that's the way you're going to go. And so every day you got to up, wake up and say, you know what, I'm going to live a spirit empowered. God, I can't do this on my own. Father, here I am again. Today I'm going to that job with all these thirsty women. And Lord, I'm asking, oh, y'all think I'm playing? And Lord, I'm asking you today to shield my eyes, to allow me to stay focused on what you've given me. Father God, when thirsty Julie is at the water cooler wearing that mini skirt, that I like. Lord, I, oh, y'all want to be fake at Hope City. That, that's wearing the thing that I like. Father, give me the boldness to be able to turn away and walk away and go to my cubicle and call my wife and tell her she the baddest thing walking. Oh, y'all don't hear me. That is living 
a spirit-empowered life of faith. You got to have God's help. But most of us, because we have the framework that sex is bad, we won't ask God for the thing that we really need. So sex is good. Sex has been perverted because sex was created by God. And the crazy thing about this is we have to talk about sexual impurity because it's one of those really, really deceptive sins. Because when you have sexual impurity in your life, it always brings friends. You can't be sexually impure and not lie. So when, when you're living in that lifestyle, you don't just tell everybody what you're about to do. I, I remember being a young kid, and my mom was like, what y'all about to do? I wasn't honest. I was like, we're going bowling. <laughs> you know, spares and strikes. <laughs> like, boom. But what, it would it look, what would it have looked like if I walked in? She's like, what you doing tonight? I'm going to have sex in the movies. <laughs> no. There's always a deceptive spirit. And, when, and some of y'all don't realize that some of the issues that you're dealing with is because you started at a very young age opening up the desires and, 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 and the issues of sex or maybe you are violated and things like deception, manipulation, control, fear, doubt, unbelief all come with sexual impurity. And you look up and you're like, I never was this person. But you look at them and you see yourself there. But it's time to give our sexuality to God. Pastor Mike, why do I have these appetites and these desires and all these other things? And like, why can't God just take them away from me? Something I found out that really freed me is that many of you aren't even dealing with your own sexual appetites and your own problems and issue. It's your mother and your grandmother. This stuff has been passed down from generation to generation. I'm going to teach you two words that really changed my life and made me really dig back into to, to what has happened before me. The words are transgression and iniquity. Write them down, please. I know they sound kind of churchy, and, and you maybe never heard them before, but transgressions and iniquity. A transgression is, is like trespassing. Like if you go past the line on somebody's uh, property, and, and you go past it, and you sin, but you come back. Like So the transgression is crossing the line. It's the outward expression. And so I like committing adultery that's a transgression ah i did it I, I didn't mean to do it oops i did it again oh my god it was my birthday like like <laughs> and you know we make all kinds of excuses to why we sin and why we go over the line and then iniquities are the inward heart motivation it's the thing on the inside that generates the transgression so if tr the transgression the crossing of the line is adultery the iniquity or the inward heart posture would be lust and what happens is the church so many times only deals with the transgression. Oh, I messed up. Lord, forgive me. I'm back. Lord, come on, let me go. I'm done with this. And we just deal with the transgression or the action, but we never pull up the iniquity from the root. And so it happens in cycles. And that's why you can go two years, three years, four years, ten years, but it keeps happening. The, the action keeps happening because the center of it is on the inside, and we've never given that to God. And do you know the crazy thing about it? If you're not going to get sexually pure for yourself, if you're not going to do it for you, you think it's too long, for God's sake, please do it for your kids. Do it for your children's children. Because the problem is many of us are dealing with what was not dealt with by our parents. Look what Deuteronomy 5, 9 says. It says the iniquities of the father will pass upon the children to the third and fourth generation. And so what's happening is because there won't be people of God to talk about it enough to allow the hearts to be open about it for us to be able to say, God, I need you to work in this area. We end up dealing with the same thing. It runs rampant in your family and your grandmama. Then it turns to your mama and then it turns to you and then you're passing it on. And you're like, Pastor Mike, I don't even understand. Your last name is Rorez and your mama's last name Smith and your sister's last name is Cortez. What do you think happened? And there's so many secrets and lies, stuff you don't even know. I found out last year some stuff about my family that I did not know during the, me doing this series because there's so many secrets and so many things that nobody dealt with. It even hit me so much in my own life because I dealt with pornography very heavy. 
addicted, messed up, jacked up, almost forfeited my wife. I'm, I mean everything. But I found out about these two words, and so I went and had a conversation with my dad, and I was like, pastor, man of God, great father. But we never talked about this. And what happened is he told me that he struggled with the same addiction in the same age group that I did and never fully dealt with. He told me, he said, Mike, I used to go to New York with my college. And he said, I would walk down the street with a pocket full of quarters. I said, Daddy, why you have a pocket full of quarters? <laughs> he says, because back then there were streets where they had peep shows. And you'd put a quarter in and the curtains would move and there would be a naked woman. And that was his day's version of pornography or letting images come into his head. And he said, I didn't deal with it. I just moved on from it. And he didn't stand up and stop the generational curse. And guess what? He had five boys. Five. And, and three of us dealt with pornography heavily. And two of my brothers had babies out of wedlock. It did what it wanted to do with my daddy. And then it skipped to the next generation. And as I look at my son... And I say, hold on, if I don't deal with this, if I don't stand up and surrender my sexuality, then this has the opportunity to pass to him. It stops with me. I can't let it keep going, Pastor Jeremy. And so I had to realize that if God invented sex, not Trey Songs. Come on, he out here lying. I invented, woo, woo. no you didn't. <laughs> and Justin Timberlake thinks that sex got lost and he bringing sexy back. And Marvin Gaye thinks that he has sexual healing. No, 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 no. God created this thing. And if he created it, that means he knows how it's supposed to work. And do you know that the same fire that heats your home and that starts your car and that gives you the ability to have hot food is the same fire that can burn your house down? If that fire is not put in the right container, it will cause destruction. That's why God created a container for sex called marriage. Third point. <laughs> sex has a container, and it's marriage. And when you put sex in container, it's amazing. Hey, ah, oh, feel the spirit. <laughs> but outside of it, it takes from you. It robs you of your purpose, and it burns down things that were supposed to stand forever. So, Pastor Mike, what am I supposed to do? Well, I, I mean, I'm already here. You don't understand. I was abused. I, I started habits, or it's been so hard, or there's a place in me that only feels good when I'm in a relationship. You got to let God feel that. You got to get into small groups and confess it, not when it happens, when it's happening. Like, you got to tell people, like, this is my struggle. If you even feel that I might be struggling with this, call me out. Pray for me. See, we think coming to the altar and getting the pastor to pray for us heals us. The Bible says in James, you, you confess your sins one to another. Pray for each other. You can be a mechanic named Joe and, 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 and a person that works in a grocery store and come together. And God says, that's where healing happens. And what did I have to do? I had to surrender my sexuality. And that's what I'm asking everybody to do. My last point, surrender your sexuality. Today at Hope City, at every campus, I'm hoping somebody was free enough by the way we talked about this to say, you know what, this is not a bad thing, but I got some issues. I got some hurts. I got some perversion. I got some desires. I got some things that have not been set in my life right. God, can you uproot those seeds, that pain, that hurt those habits and God can you plant something pure like like you're the God that's so good that you can take our transgressions and iniquities and do something with it look how congruent the word of God is I want you to turn to Isaiah chapter 58 this is so good look what the word says it says to us but he this is Jesus was wounded for our transgressions so every time we stepped over the line, he took a beating for that. And it says, and he was bruised 
for our iniquities. Can you see how dope this is? Is that, remember what I told you, a transgression is the outward expression. What you did, where do you get wounded at on the outside? If somebody cuts you, that's a wound. And so he took the wound for our transgressions. But look what he did for our iniquities. It says he was bruised. Remember the iniquities is the inward thing. And when you get bruised, it comes from the inside out. God said, I have done something that will heal every mistake you made, and I'll heal the root. When he was on the cross and he let them beat them in the scourging, he said, no, 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 no. I could call angels right now to save me, but Michael's going to need me. A few more licks. Take a few more stripes for the people at Hope City because you don't have to live in bondage to sexual sin. Look what it says. It says the chastisement for our peace. This was for me. This was for your peace so you don't have to live in the bondage. He said it was upon him. And by his stripes. When you see the stripes on pictures, those were not just because Jesus went through a bad day. He took those stripes for our healing. And you can walk free from every sexual perversion, everything that happened, and be able to be a pure vessel in your thoughts, in your mind, in your life, and that will pass on to somebody else. My last analogy that you can see is that I think about water and, and how powerful water is. And water in the right container can produce life and light for millions of people. These are millions of gallons of water rushing, and it's producing life and light for an entire city. But that same water outside of a container, and Houston probably knows about this more than anybody, can cause damage to things, people, and places that will be irreparable. And even when the water recedes, the mildew of what happened will still be there. And even when you get a new relationship and cut out the drywall that was damaged, there will still be pieces that you never can replace that were lost in the damage. Today I'm asking everybody at Hope City, let's just surrender. Everything that's happened, every image we've seen, everything we've done. Yeah, I did it. I was a hoe, but now I'm holy. Oh, y'all better help me in here. God doesn't care that you did it. He wants you to submit it. I don't want you to miss that. God doesn't care that you did it. He wants you to submit it. And today there's husbands and wives that need to apologize to each other and start afresh and get in marriage counseling and join a group. There are people in this room that have been struggling in your sexuality and you're up on them websites at night by yourself or on your cell phone and you're struggling and you need to tell somebody and you need to come clean. God is just saying, could you please give it to me? Because the greatest scripture that I found in this is at the end of that 1 Corinthians 6 verse 14. It says, and God will raise us from the dead by his power. By whose power? His power just as he raised our Lord from the dead. And you know, sometimes I used to read scriptures and just be like, ooh, that is so good, that is so good. And I didn't get nothing out of it. I didn't know anything, but that's just the right thing to say. I stopped doing that. And I said, God, you're going to have to give me revelation on this. So I kept re reading it and kept reading it. And this is what God said to me, and I think it's going to set somebody free. Anybody who's dealing with sexual perversion or sexual impurity or sexual thoughts or being chained to different things, or, oh, God, it's good. He said, Michael, I raised Jesus Christ from the dead. He said, and when you die, I'm going to raise you from the dead and you're going to be with me. He said, if I can raise a dead body, what makes you think I can't manage a living one? Mm. And today I want somebody to hear me say this, that whatever you've been struggling with, God is powerful enough to handle it if you surrender it to him. So Romans 6, 13, don't let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Give instead. Everybody say instead. You have a different option. Instead, give yourselves completely to God. 
For you were dead. Yeah, you were. But now you have new life. So use your whole body, your legs, your eyes, your thighs, your text and thumbs. Use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. Today, Hope City, we're going to surrender our sexuality. Because sex is not a bad thing. Sex was God's idea when it's put in the right container of marriage. And if you are not there, God will help you sustain into the place of purity you need to be. Can we give God some praise in this place? Come on, standing all over the building, standing all over the building. Pastor Mike, why, 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 why did you come so hard for me today? It's because somebody needs freedom like I did. And like I said, you, you don't have to like what I said. I came on assignment, and somebody's heart is open now to let God. Hands lifted all over this place. The international sign of surrender. Father God, we thank you right now that we are really going to give you all of us. Father, every area of our life that we have not surrendered, every area that we acted didn't exist, everything, Father God, that we've experienced and thought, Father God, that has been perverted, we submit it to you today. God, I thank you right now that hearts that have been torn by perversion are turning into purity. I thank you that marriages, Father, that have been defiled by thoughts and images of others, Father, are coming into a place, Father God, of unity and having thoughts of you. God, I'm thanking you that the person who is struggling in isolation right now gets accountability, healing, and freedom. Hope City will be a place, Father, where your standard can be lifted up. We will experience the kingdom of God, not just in eternity, but in history. And I declare, Father, anybody's heart who has been bound by abuse and hurt, Father, that you're coming in to lift them up. Thank you for your son. Thank you for grace. Thank you for your love. And thank you for this message that is turning us back to a biblical view of sex, love, and marriage. Have your way in our lives, God, and we will be careful to give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Come on, let's give God a shout of praise. Oh, come on, Hope City. Worship our God. I don't want anybody to go anywhere right now unless it's an absolute emergency because it's in this moment that you will make a decision whether this will become an imprint on your heart or whether it will just be another good sermon that you heard made you a little uncomfortable but you got to laugh a little bit two things you have to do how do I how do I surrender my sexuality two things number one you got to be intimate with God well, what is intimacy with God Intimacy is to know and to be fully known. Intimacy with God. Here's a, a way I like to look at it. Intimacy. God into me see. Nothing hidden. Everything open. I want to be intimate with you, God. How do I get intimate with God? You got to pray. You got to talk to Him. I don't know how to pray. Go to HopeCity.com. Download the prayer guide. It's awesome how to pray, how to talk to God. It's important for you to do every day. When you're intimate with God, you won't be doing this. You'll be, you'll be doing this. God, I know me. I know, I know how I think. So I got to start this morning on my face. I got to start this morning on my knees. And at lunchtime, God, over here at lunchtime, I know me. So I got I to gotta, I gotta do lunchtime on my knees. And I know me, God. So at bedtime, I got to be on my knees. I've got to be intimate with God. Here, here's why. You desire intimacy. And if you don't have intimacy with God, you will desire it in a perverted way. You have to be intimate with God. And number two. Bible says very clearly confess your sins one to another not just to Jesus one to another that you may be healed because some of us are dealing with iniquity we've never talked about we have a perfect capsule for that and it's called it's called groups and I'm asking every person in our church to sign up for a freedom group you've got to go through freedom I'm telling you, it changed my life. I told my wife after our first Freedom Conference, I said, I realize now why we started this church. Not so we could have just a bunch of people come, just so that we could get everybody in our church to go through freedom groups so that they could be set free and become disciples of Jesus Christ and see incredible things happen in their lives. Here's where it starts. Listen, Jesus said, if any man would come after me, so first there's got to be a desire. I want to come after you, God. Let him deny himself. But it's what I want. It's what I need. It's what I have to deny yourself. Take up your cross. Follow him. 
And I'm telling you, the freedom that you experience will blow your mind. I want to ask a question if you're in here and you know for some reason Jesus has not been the center of your life. Maybe you've lived for God for a long time. Maybe you've never given your life to Jesus, but you know somewhere in your life he's just not the center of your life. And today, you want to say, today I'm putting a stake in the ground. I'm making a moment. I'm acknowledging Jesus. The Bible says when you acknowledge him, he will acknowledge you. So with heads up, eyes open, if you're saying today's my day, Boldly put your hand in the air. That's me. Today's my day. Hands, 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 hands. Come on. Let's every campus pray this prayer with me. Pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I'm a sinner. You're the only one who can save me. So right now in this moment, I'm giving you my whole life. Forgive me of my sins. I give it all to you. Be the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, listen, if you prayed that prayer, I'm going to give you a real practical step, and then I'm going to dismiss you at all campuses, and you're going to use all the exits because we need you to exit quickly and quietly. But if you said that prayer, this is very important. you got a next step. I want you to text HOPE to 77453. It's very practical, but we're going to send you three things. We're going to send you information about our connect groups that you could be a part of, information about our growth track, and then we're going to give you a free Bible-based video program where you can start studying the Word of God at your own at your own time on your own level. It's important. This stuff is important. You got to go. You got to go. You got to go further. And God's calling us as a church to go further. All of that information is on HopeCity.com. Are you excited about what God's done? How about Pastor Mike Todd? Come on, y'all let him know. That was amazing. Here's my prayer. I pray the Lord blesses you. I pray that he keeps you. I pray that he makes his face to shine upon you. I pray that he turns his countenance towards you. That's his favor. And I pray that God gives you peace. Do you receive that? If you need prayer, prayer partners will be a down at the front of every auditorium. God bless you. You're dismissed. Use all the exits. Have a great week.